Hello everyone, I greet in the name of God Almighty. My name is Apostle and Silas and I'm here with Nancy Grace. And today we have a very interesting topic to react to. It says, a Christian posted in tears after Yusuf Estes answer his question. Whoa, okay, I believe this is going to be a very interesting um, video. So guys, if today happens to be the first time of you checking out my channel, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and follow me on my Facebook and Instagram. And if you have any video you want me to react to, don't forget to drop it at the comment section and I'm going to check it out. So guys, if I will get on to the video, I'm a theologian and I make this video not to discredit anyone's religion. This is basically for educational purposes and I believe that at the end of this video, we all are going to learn from it. So guys, let's get down to the video and check this out. And your occupation as well, please? I'm a business person. Okay, I was invited to this peace convention by a friend. And I came here because it was called a peace convention. But I, I found this catalog, I think a booklet, that said something about Yusuf. It was written that raised as a strong Christian, educated in Texas, USA, he became very successful owning music stores, television shows, and was a music minister and preacher of the Bible. So I want to ask you, sir, as a preacher of the Bible, what was the what was the reason or the point or the truth that you found in Islam that led to your conversion as a strong Christian and preacher of the Bible? That's a beautiful question. Because there's lights in my eyes, I don't know exactly where you are. Can you hold up your hand? Where I am here, sir. There you are. I'm sorry. Now I see you. Your name is Gabriel? Yes, sir. In Arabic, it's Jibril. That's the angel I was talking about. So we, we're very happy to have you with us today. It's a pleasure to have you with us. And it's a pleasure for you to ask such a question in such a nice way. I'm privileged uh, to ask you that question. I wish I was there. I could give you a big hug. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Because when I was a Christian, see, I wasn't nice like you. You're nice. I was tough, you know. Uh, because I thought I had to save the world, I'm going to go out and preach a message and, you know, I'm still a little wacko, don't get me wrong, but not near as bad as I was. What I found, and this is important to know, what I found was in my Bible first. What I found was in my Bible first. Because I used to travel with a lot of the so-called preachers of Christianity. And some of the ones that I traveled with they don't represent real Christianity, by the way, but I traveled with them and I learned that I couldn't trust them. Especially when they would pick up the Bible and say, the Bible says, the Bible says. And afterwards I would say, it didn't say that. They say, who cares as long as the people think so. And so it bothered me so much that I started trying to really read and understand many different translations of the Bible. But they didn't match. So I said, obviously, you know, translation is not the real thing. I need to learn Kone Greek. I knew that the Latin, I had already studied Latin, and I knew that the Vulgate was only a translation of Kone Greek anyway. So when I went to the Kone Greek, it was hard. That was really hard, because those characters, they're, they're confusing, you know. I don't know if you know Greek, but it's weird Greek to me anyway. Then I come to know that, oh, by the way, actually Jesus' language was a form of Hebrew called Aramaic. A form of Semitic language called Aramaic. And I had no clue what that was. So I tried to learn the Hebrew. Now all along the way I'm taking, okay, interlinear Bible. I don't know if you know what that is. That's when you have the word in English and under it will have the word in Kone Greek. And you can look it up. Now, people like Ahmed Didat, Rahim Allah, and Dr. Zachar Naik, they have these giant computer brains, okay? I don't have that. Giant computer brains, they can process all this stuff in their head. And I traveled with Zachar many times, and I have to tell you, he can really do that any time. 
but this is not my subject. When I was studying it, I came to realize that there was a book called Strong's Concordance of the Bible. My father had a copy, so I would sit there. It's big. It's a very big book. And I would go through and look for these words. And then it will tell you in Kone Greek what's the root, what it comes from, and what it's related to. And where it's in the Bible. And then all of a sudden, I started discovering something really big. There's a whole lot of interpolation. Because if you look over here, the same exact word means one thing, but over here it means something else. And then statements that people say about the Bible are not true. If I quote to you from what we have in the Quran, I can quote it to you in the Arabic language. But how many people do you know that can quote the Bible in the original Aramaic of the New Testament or ancient Hebrew of the Old Testament? Not very many people, right? But I want you to look, while well, you're standing right there, Gabriel, look around this room right here. Now, I, I don't know most of these people. Some of them know me from TV or something like that, but they don't really know me. But... If I open this book on any page and I start quoting out of this thing, believe it or not, they will know if I'm making mistakes. There'll be somebody in this room that can tell you, no, that's a mistake. You said it wrong. But I'm just going to go to the first page. There we go. This is the first page. Hold it so the cameras can get a shot. Hi, guys. All right. What's the first letter? First letter in the first page. Anybody know? Tell us. Ba. Everybody knows it's Ba. So what's the word? Bismillah. This is Arabic. And keep in, keep in mind, this is the English program we're doing. I'm speaking some form of English right now, right? Yeah. Okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Next words. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Iyaka da'budu wa iyaka nasta'in Surat al-Ladina an'amta alayhim Ameen You don't have to say Ameen except in Islam but you know Anyway Now you could say Gabriel Oh well I mean you know that could be a rehearsal thing that people do every day. And guess what? You'd be right. You're right. We, That's we do say that. We'd say it every day, five times a day. We pray, but there are a total of 17 times we say it. So you could say, ah, they just know that. But by the way, how about if I mispronounce something? Would they catch it? Ghairul magdubi alayhum waladalim. Whoops. Huh? Huh? Ooh, yeah, alayhim. Huh? Actually, it's both because there is another pronunciation, but the common one. Now, I want to go to the other side, though. I'm going to go to the back. I'll go to the back. That was the front. This is the back. A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهِ الله لَمْ وَلَمْ وَلَمْ That's in the back. Whoops. How about the middle? It's not actually dead middle, okay, but it's close to the middle. In Adina? How about that? That's chapter 3, verse 19, by the way. Kuntin Chayru Umatin? That's chapter 3, verse 110. Now, what I'm showing you is that we know this in Arabic. Every Muslim on the earth 
knows this book in the Arabic language. That's 1.6 billion know that it's in Arabic. And we have some of it memorized, and all of us know it's only in Arabic. No, wait. This is where it gets good. How many in this room, you know somebody who memorized the whole entire Quran cover to cover? Raise your hand. In Arabic. You, you met somebody, you know somebody, somebody in your family. Raise your hand. I did this in a university in the United States. I said, now, for the Christians, raise your hand if you ever met anybody in your life who memorized the whole Bible in Hebrew and Kone Greek, and they just went, what? Is that the language? My point is not to put down the Bible. My point is to put down the people who lie about it. Because the more I studied the Hebrew and the Kone Greek, the more I began to realize that what I was learning from the Quran in English, I was reading English, Yusuf Ali, you remember? It was the same thing. Especially the one I read to you just now and they helped me with. Lam yalid. Well, lam yalid. Listen to this. I'm going to give you a translation of, of scripture. God is not a man. And God is not the son of man. Is this in the Quran? Is it in the Quran? Yes. But I didn't quote it from the Quran. I quoted it from the Bible. That's in the book of Numbers, chapter 23, verse 19. God is not a man that he should sin, and God is not the son of man that he'll repent. And when I read that, I said, now wait a minute. If it says here that God is not a son of man, then how is it in the New Testament it's saying Jesus is son of man, how could he be a God? I took it to one of my preacher friends and I said, hey, look at this. What do you say about this? You know what he said? He said, that's a big S, son of man. The other one's a little S, son of man. Now, I think, I think you already know, as most of the audience knows, there's no such thing as upper and lower case letters in Aramaic, Hebrew, or Arabic. It means they lied again. And then another subject, another subject, saying Islam spread by the sword. Islam spread by the sword. I heard so many preachers telling me, get away from these Muslims. Islam spread by the sword. 604 pages, 114 chapters, 6,666 verses. Depending on how you count them up, guess what? And many words in Arabic for sword. Saif, Muhannad, Hussam, I think 16 words for sword. Guess how many times I found the, any of those words in the Arabic? Zero. Not once. In the Bible, just the word sword. Over 200 times. Oops. Wait, you ask me, I'm just telling you. So when I take my Bible to the preacher and I said, excuse me, it says here that Jesus said, I did not come with peace. I came with a sword. And it's time to sell your coat and buy a sword. What did that mean? You know what he said? Listen to this. You'll never believe how people can lie. He said, don't you know this was done in Italy where they transcribed this stuff, the Latin, you know, it was in Italy. Rome is in Italy, don't you know that? I said, yeah. He said, and they would work by candlelight at night and it was hard to see, yeah. And while they were trying to translate, you know, put this down in the Latin language, you know what happened? They were eating spaghetti. The Italians, they like spaghetti. And spaghetti fell down and it made an S. It was word. It wasn't sword. It was word. He said, I came with the word. Then you know what's wrong with that? The word for word in Kone Greek is logos. Now, how did they turn logos into sword?
by dropping spaghetti on it. And here, excuse me, but what does it mean, sell your coat and buy a word? What is it, a game show on TV? I'd like to buy that word right there for $100, please. What is this? And the more I talked to them, the more I could see lie after lie after lie. And finally I said, you know what? I don't need to be in a religion full of liars. But it didn't convince me about Islam yet. Where I got convinced about Islam is over a separate subject. And then the Quran and the Bible backed it up. Right there, buddy. In the heart. Because nobody can play with your heart. That's yours. You own it. It's yours. You can do whatever you want with it. It is yours. Right? Yes. That's the one thing nobody can imprison. They can lock me in a prison, put me in a box, throw me in the ocean, but they can't control this. That's mine. That's yours. You own it. So if you get inside of that heart, like I did, and clean it out and throw all the trash and the garbage out of there, throw the lies out of there, the misconceptions, the prejudice, and just... Give it all up and say, you know what? I belong to God. I just belong to God. God, guide me. And that's what I did. And when I did that, I had this strange impression I need to put my head on the ground. And so I did that. And with my head on the ground, I said these words, Gabriel. Oh God, if you're there, guide me. And when I got up, I realized something. I'm the one with the problem. The world's not the problem. I was the problem. And from that day to this day, 19 years, I'm saying the same thing every day, 17 times a day. Edina Sarata Mustaqeen, guide us to the straight path. Edina Sarata Mustaqeen, guide us to the straight path. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm not psychic. We don't believe in psychics and magic and all that stuff. We don't. But I'm going to tell you something. And now you, are, you brothers and sisters, are going to see something strange. Because Gabriel and I don't, never met. We're not setting this up. What I, he doesn't even know what I'm going to say. But Gabriel, you've been praying in your heart, asking God to guide you, or you wouldn't be standing there right now. Is that true or false? That is true. There you go. There's your verification. He said that's true. And I know it because I've been through this again and again and again. Thousands of people I watch come to Islam again and again, just like Gabriel. They're looking for truth. They're not looking for Islam. They're not looking for the Quran. They're just looking for truth, real truth. And because there's only one God and only one way to get to God, it has to be on his terms and there's only one way. And we said it in Adina, in the Lahi, Islam. The only thing Allah wants from you is this simple thing, your heart. That's what he wants. Give him your heart and everything else will be fine. And how you do that? I'm going to give you five words in the English language. They have to be all at the same time. Surrender, submission, obedience, sincerity, and peace. Do you want those things in your life? Yes, sir. I do too. Everybody in this room wants those things. All at the same time though, surrender, submission, obedience to his commandments. You know the Ten Commandments. We got the same thing. It's the same thing. It's not a new religion. And then sincerity, to be sincere. No lies, no showing off, no riyadh for Allah only. And finally, to be in peace with whatever he gives you, say, okay, thank you. Even if you like it, thank you. If you don't like it, thank you. Anyway, because it's from him. Be in peace with it. This word in Arabic is one. It takes five words in English. You know what the word is in Arabic? No. Islam. Islam. Really? That's the word.
Guys, um, so much thought for this um, video. Actually, uh, Yusuf Estes, you know, this is not the first time of me um, listening to him delivering speech or shall I say teaching. But today's own is just um, special as he was just teaching and then asking um, Brother Gabriel and then uh, talking to him about um, um, Islam, when he says that um, Islam means uh, to surrender, he talks about um, submission, he talks about um, obedience, he talks about um, sincerity, and then he also talks about peace. And then he asks, Do he know the meaning of this in Arabic? And then he was like, No. And he was like, The meaning is Islam. Like, <laughs> I was also shocked the same way Gabriel is actually shocked because I didn't just see it coming. I just know that Islam means submission to the will of God. That's all I know. But then when he added, in a sense, some of those things and how he was talking about um, Jesus' word, about um, the sword and all that, like, I was like, wow, okay. <laughs> I was like, this is serious. And then... You realize that um, Yusuf Estes is somebody who is very curious and somebody who wants to learn every day. He wants to kind of understand why some things, you understand, are happening. So he keep on, you understand, meeting several preachers to ask them questions concerning the Bible and what it says or the meaning. But some of the things he was getting was not actually the good one. So that kind of um, keep confusing him the more. But then when he went on in a sense to make his own research, you know, about um, the Quran, then he got it in a sense differently. So he felt like, well, Islam should be the right um, religion for me. Since uh, I have been studying the Bible, I have been raised in a sense based on the Christian faith and values, and then now I got to realize that some of the things I believe in seems not to be true, then why should I still be in the same place? So he decided to make a decision um, for himself. I have always said that um, when it comes to the Bible, there is no doubt that there are some errors and contradiction and a lot, you understand? in the Bible and then just like he rightly say, of course, um, a lot of people don't even understand Aramaya. In fact, like how many people do even understand Aramaya in the first place? Talk less talk to talk about uh, Hebrew or back to Greek. You know, how many people, you know, most people, all they just know is what? The English version. That's just what they understand they know, but they do not know what some of the original um, version mean or what it is saying and that's why uh, i am saying that well i know that everybody cannot study um aramaic or neither um hebrew which we are the major language that um jesus christ was um speaking because we learned that the native language was speaking was actually aramaic and then um hebrew but then after so many translation to hebrew and then to greek and all that by alexander the great even before finally back to English by King James. So you realize that the Bible have gone through so many things and that's why I have always been of an opinion that of course is sometimes I do not know if it was intentional or not intentional, but I am actually of an opinion that some of this error happened unintentionally. I think that it was not intentional for all these things in a stand to comes about, but this happened in the sense that these preachers, they try to spread this gospel to so many languages. So at that point in time, they try to change or translate some of the, to translate the Bible to people's um, languages, right? And at the course of doing it, of course, some words may not necessarily or actually, they actually lose their values, let me put it that way, or they lose their meaning. 
And that resulted to when it reached to the point that people got confused. So which one is now the original one? And then probably trying to translate uh, the Greek back to the Hebrew again. And at that point in time, it gives another different meaning. And then this is where all the errors, the interpolation, and all those things in a sense came about. But nevertheless, I have still always states that in a sense, Christianity should not be limited to translation. We don't have to limit it to because somebody did not translate a particular word the way it's supposed to be. So on that note, then Christianity is not a true religion. I think that we should be able to, I think we are actually getting it wrong in that um, direction. Let's not limit it to translation. Of course, let's assume, just like the Quran says in chapter 4, it says that if not for Allah, they could have what? Uh, they could have all this misinterpretation and error, all those things could have actually been in the Quran too, but just because of God who decided to preserve it, right? And then we, we are all aware, like I was always says in my videos, that even in the book of um, Jude chapter 5 has made us to understand that, of course, we are aware of some of these antichrists. They came in even as Christians, but their main objective is what? To bring all this misunderstanding about the world so that they will make the people feel confused and then they would they lose their faith. So we are all, you understand, we have understand some of these things, of course. We know that a lot of people have do so many things to make sure that they make this Bible not to be the word of God. But we all know in the back of our mind that originally the Bible is actually the word of God. But some people have acted on it that have changed so many meaning of some word that is making it to be like that. So now, if, for instance, you have a parent, right? You know your parent. You know who they are. You know what it is, right? And then somebody come and write so many things about your parent which are not true. So are you going to disown your parent because somebody have went on to write so many things about them that is not true? Then you be like, okay, if that should be the case, then I renounce being, you know, them being my parent. So I have to choose another thing to be my parent. Is that how you're going to act? For instance, I think maybe I should give this example. So for instance, I have not traveled to any of the Arabian and Peninsula before, but then let's say to the Arab world, for instance, uh, for people who have gone there, or from some of the perception that people who have not traveled to such a um, region people have this perception that that place is of course they are dominated by muslims so they are just islamic they are islamic countries so people believe that these countries they are violent they are terror they are these they are terrorists and all those things like but is it really true because some people have actually traveled there and then they says that the way we go there the people are nice people the way they accommodate you the way they treat you and all those things so people come and then says that it's the media that went on to say some things in a sense about them which is not true and then from there what happened to them some of them end up what reverting or converting to islam right or wrong right now some people have done their best to make sure that the tone christianity to be another thing different right should we leave the christianity because some people have decided to corrupt it or we should remain in it knowing fully where that is all about what religion or faith which are we supposed to do I'm, ask, I'm actually asking my muslim brothers these questions for them to help me respond should we take it like that because somebody said this is what it is just like the way I make use of the Arab um, countries, or should I say the Muslim nation, as people, or the West, or the European, who says that they are terror, they are terrorists, they are a religion of violence, and all those things. But then some people will go there, and then they will realize that what they say about them is not true, and they end up reverting, right? Yeah. Is it not the same thing? Just think about it. I just want you to just reflect on it. Don't just write a comment in a sense. Just but I just want you to take like a minute. Think about it before you respond at the comment um, session. So let's hear from you, Nancy Grace. Wow, very interesting video. 
I love the way he respond and the, he have said a lot about himself. Uh, about himself, that is very interesting. And I, I understand that the Bible has been translated to many different languages, languages and also has been corrupted and all that he said. So let's also all that he said, but I still believe that the Bible is the word of God, and I still believe that is is not only the word of God; is a word of faith. So when we study, we 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 should also pray that God will give us wisdom to understand what it really means. So that is just my own opinion that God will grant us understanding in His word, even though they may make a mistake. So if God really revealed by his spirit, reveal the true meaning of the chapter or what I'm reading, I I what I'm reading I think is enough for me. I just pray that God will give me the grace or give us the grace to understand since it's just a, a religion of faith that we can be able to to understand the, 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 the word and also since it's the word of God that we can be able to 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 to, to be obedient to God's words. So this is just my opinion to this that Alright, so guys this is the end of our video. If you like our reaction you should like, share and subscribe and if you have any video you want me to react to don't forget to drop it at the comment section and I'm going to